When I started building websites, they looked like Now I can build a website that looks like this in a weekend. Or even if it's not a website, I can put together a poster, graphic designs, just about anything and have it look absolutely beautiful in a heartbeat. And I don't have to plan it, I don't have to prepare it, I can just fiddle around and it comes out looking great. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the five steps that you need to follow to design your own absolutely beautiful websites. And I can guarantee that they work because if I can teach it to myself, you can learn it too. Now, number one on our excellent list of important information is that to be great at designing websites, you must first absolutely be appalling at it. You need to suck bottom of the barrel and you need to accept that. So many people out there won't even try because they just think they can't do it. Well, actually, I believe that you can put together something that looks pretty crappy. I'm sure you have that in you. And that's an important part of the process. The first things that I designed, fortunately I'm stupid enough to have a lot of self-confidence, but I thought they looked really good. They didn't. But it's a really important part of the process, and it's a part that you should not neglect either because it's important to fail, fail, fail until suddenly you will succeed. Like, literally, you have to learn what doesn't work. And there's no better way to create those examples than by sucking at it. So that's step number one, is that we have to suck before we can succeed. Step number two, now this is really important, especially when you're a beginner at learning to design good websites, is that you have to limit your options. There are a million bajillion ways that you can style a website. Literally from color selection alone, there are far too many options. I was very lucky that I came across a particular thing that I'm about to share with you that just limited me. It only gave me so many things that I could do. Don't get me wrong, I could still design and build anything, but in terms of, you know, colors, sizes, shapes, layouts, paddings, all of that kind of stuff, I was limited. And having less choice is actually a superpower because first, if you have a framework, it's likely they've given you the creme de la crop, which means that you'll be working with good stuff. So it's harder to do it incorrectly and even if you're not designing websites, you can still have this template open and use it as a reference. Now, the reference I am specifically talking about is Tailwind CSS. And if we go over to their documentation, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's so easy to use. You can find everything from standard gaps to colors to, you know, transitions, backgrounds, borders, shapes, you know, uh, how round you want your corners, different layouts all that kind of information, different animations. And having that kind of resource, even for just colors, is so important. And it just limits your design to the things that matter most. And it also means, especially if you're designing websites with Tailwind CSS, you can iterate insanely quickly. And you'll quick, you know, that means you can fail a lot really fast and then suddenly succeed at it. Now, thing number three that is super important is keep a record. Everything you see that looks good, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that looks good, don't get me wrong, so maybe not everything, but everything you see that looks good that you would like to incorporate a few in a future project of yours, you need to have a record of it. If you just think, oh, that's cool, maybe I'll try it in my next project, and don't actually save that particular resource, you just will not find it. It'll be too hard, it'll be gone into the ether. I use Google Docs as one of my resources, and if I find a good website, I will just link it there. And then when I'm looking for inspiration in a new website, I will have a look through all of the websites that I browse. It makes an amazing inventory or catalog. To be fair, if you know some cool websites, actually comment them down below. And maybe what I'll do is share that resource so that everybody can have a look at some really cool websites. Uh, but that's really cool. There's another way of saving cool designs that I'll show you very shortly. But it could literally be even you know, a movie cover or whatever the posters are that they show up. There are a lot of design is everywhere. So when you see inspiration, take a record of it. Thing number four that is so very important that you do is you incorporate. Now it's easy to be lazy and, you know, save all of these designs and not use them. But my everything I build nowadays has a new design. Something that I've taken inspiration from somewhere else 
or maybe it's just the actual thing pulled into my own site. Now, one of the caveats is don't go copying other websites. You don't really learn anything from that process. You have to adapt it. Take the original and make something that fits your own theme or take it out of its original context and apply it in a new context and then make it work, fiddle around with it. Use those fast iterations to get it working for you. You will thank me. And the other thing you should do is save that. Once again, I have a Google Doc for all of my websites, but all of the cool code use cases, everything like that is saved into my GitHub. So for example, on one of my websites, I know there's a really cool footer. So every time I want to use that footer, I'll go look at that code. On others, I know that I have really cool glowy buttons. So every time I want cool glowy buttons, that's what I'll go to. Others, there's text cha uh, color changing features. There's box shadows. On another website, I have a really cool, uh, it's like a browser viewer. Keep a record of these little design elements once you've incorporated them into your new projects. Five, number five, last but definitely not least, revisions are better than fresh starts. Every time you start something new, you have to go from it looking bad to it looking good. And the thing is, is that, it, you know, you could spend a solid week doing on that. The first time you look at it, or, you know, you, you first have that solid block, you will not finesse it. You won't get it from 98% to 100%. You'll be lucky if you get it to 85%. What you need to be doing is revising websites, coming back to something after two months, a month, even a week off, and making some changes, being like, actually, no, this could be better, try something different. And then you really, that, that's the golden moment where you push the boundaries of your design abilities into unexplored territory. And an example is my small James website. It's in its fifth revision. Every time I come back and I finesse it and I take what I've learned and I've, you know, adapted, I evolve it. And you just learn so much in those micro increments in those, you know, very high percentiles. If you keep building things from zero to 85%, you're going to get good at zero to 85 percent but you're not going to incorporate that last 15 percent into the next level of 85 percent which can be confusing but essentially what used to feel like 80 percent now i can just get things to what you know my old self would consider 150 percent but that's my new 85 percent so you really need to keep the revisions going don't start fresh every time make sure you go back to old projects and revise them take them to a hundred percent super important and if you do these five things, I guarantee you, your design ability will become a firecracker in absolutely no time. Anyway, I hope those tips help you. Let me know if you have any thoughts on them. Let me know if you have any additional thoughts on how to become an excellent website designer. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons. I love that support. Catch you guys later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Learn to Code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.